Um, okay, thank you very much to Ivan, Daniel, and Evan for inviting me to speak here. Uh, so I'm going to talk about my joint work with Daniel, my recent joint work with Daniel. But in fact, what I'm going to talk about is a generalization of our joint work with Daniel and, and, and Jeremy. So when I was a postdoc in Toronto, <clears throat> so me, General, uh, me, Jeremy, and Daniel had a paper in which we constructed the KPZ fixed point. And so we kept we, we keep getting interesting point sequences of this work. And one of these consequences will be what I'm going to talk about. Um, yeah, so by the way, so yesterday several people said how complicated our formulas are. And so I hope in my talk I will try to persuade you that everything is much more beautiful than you expect. Um, right, so what did we do? What did we do with Jeremy and Daniel? So we solved the continuous time phase set. So the model is the following, the particles jump on the integer lattice. There is at most one particle per side. The particles independent, uh, independently try to jump to the right. And there is only one constraint that they're not allowed to jump on top of each other. So this particle is allowed to jump, but this one is not. OK? Um, so one can compute the multipoint distribution function of TSEP. And it happened to be given by a beautiful formula in form of a fret form determinant. So if we fix some numbers of particles and i, we fix some values i, ai, we look at the later time t, then the multipoint distribution function is given by the fret form determinant in a suitable discrete space, where the kernel inside the determinant is given by this formula. Okay, so it has two parts. The first one. Q is the indicator function. This power means that this indicator function is convolved with itself several times. And the second part of the kernel is given by the sum of products of functions of size and phi. So the functions of size are given to us by a nice formula. It's a contour integral. Uh, so the expression inside the integral depends on x naught, which is the initial configuration of the, of the system at time zero. Um, yeah, so the functions phi are given to, given to us implicitly. They are unique solutions of the so-called bar-synchronization problem. These are the unique polynomials of degrees uh, smaller than n, which satisfy these identities. Okay, so the functions psi and phi, they are bar orthogonal to each other. Okay. Um, so there is a much nicer way how to write the formulas for psi. So in fact, the psi are nothing else but the shifted and weighted Charlie polynomials. So this pk are Charlie polynomials. And so we shift the argument in the of the Charlie polynomial by x naught, which is the initial configuration, and we multiply by the Poissonian weight, which is respectively shifted. Okay. And we want to bioanalyze such system of functions. So in the simplest case, when the initial configuration is step, so meaning that x naught of n minus k is equal to k minus n, then you can see that k's cancel out in this expression. And what you get is just a weighted Charlie polynomial. So in, in this case, it is just, we strike forward, we get formulas for functions phi. They are also Charlie polynomials. So when the initial configuration of particles x naught is non-trivial, then it is not a simple problem to solve this bus organization problem. Um, right, so the goal of our work was to study the so-called KPC scaling limit of the model. So in other words, so what we have shown is that there are constants alpha, beta, gamma, delta, sigma, which we know exactly what they are. They depend on the uh, initial density of particles, such that if we take the initial configurations 
which converge on after this rescaling to some upper semi-continuous function H0. Then at later times, if you apply the KPG rescaling to taste set particles, they converge to some non-trivial random object, which is called the KPG fixed point. Okay, so the scaling looks like this. We take a very large time proportional to epsilon minus three half, and we look at particles which are very far. Oh yeah, so I forgot to say that uh, in the model, we always look at uh, one-sided particle configurations. So there's always the third particle and we count them from the right to the left. So this is the third, second, third, and up to infinity. Yeah, so for a large time, uh, we look at the particles which are far away to the left. So we recenter respectively and we look at the fluctuations when epsilon goes to zero. Um, right, so the method which we use to solve TASEP, well, it, it was kind of clear that it could be applied to some other similar interaction particle systems. And uh, so first of all, what we did, we just created a list of particle systems similar to TASEP for which something is known. So by something, I mean, for example, transition distributions were computed exactly. What is the probability to go for n particles from one state to another state. So we made this list of models. Okay, so let me mention some of them. So the most natural models are the discrete time taste set. So time is discrete, but then, uh, so we have more freedom how to define the, the dynamics of the system. So for example, the jump distributions of the particle can be Bernoulli or geometric. Then there is another possibility to define the update of particles. So when we are in discrete time, when you go from time t to t plus one, we can update particles one by one from right to left or one by one from left to right. Uh, so we can also combine, oh yeah, so there, there are also two natural types of interactions between particles. So the one which is the blocking interaction when particles are not allowed to jump on top of each other. Another, another one is pushing interaction when a particle tries to jump on top of somebody, then this somebody is pushed so that uh, there are always at least one, at most one particle uh, at the side. Okay, so we can um, look at such uh, variants of taste step. There are also some analog an analogous models in, in continuous time. Uh, so for example, the push A step in which particles are allowed to jump to the right and to the left. When they jump to the right, they behave as taste set particle. When they jump to the left, they're pushing the neighbors. Okay, and then uh, there were some more complicated variants of taste set uh, discovered by Pavlovsky and collaborators where, okay, so it's, it's like a discrete time taste set, but then when two particles are together, the, the distribution of the jump changes. Okay, so there, there is a list of such different variants of taste set and we were curious which of them we can solve. Um, yeah, so in my work with Daniel, we introduce a general biotangularization problem similar to the one which you saw before, such that, yeah, we solve this problem and in particular cases, the solution to this problem gave us distributions of all these interacting particles which we were looking at. Um, yeah, so the biosignalization problem which we introduced happened to be significantly more general than the list of models which we knew. So then the natural question would be to find some non-trivial model which was not studied before, but which we can solve using our method. And so we discovered such model. And one example of this model will be phase set with long memory. So in this case, we keep track not only of the location of particle at a given time, like, okay, so the red particle, the red dot is a particle, the location of the particle at a given time, but we also keep track of several of its previous positions. So at time t, the particle is here, at time t minus one, it was here, at time t minus two, it was here. And the same for this. So I draw the vertical line just to indicate that two locations were the same, the same size, okay? So in other words, instead of 
system of particles, we look at system of, we call them caterpillars, because in fact, they evolve like caterpillars. So they are updated one by one from right to left, the head jumps, and then the other parts of the caterpillar are updated respectively. So for example, this one jumps here, then the other parts are moved. This one jumped, and then the other parts got updated. Oh, so this one stayed, but then the other parts got updated. And so on. And so and then uh, the evolution of this caterpillar. Yeah, so there is a restriction on the evolution of the caterpillars. So the head of the caterpillar is not allowed to jump on the top of the tail of its neighbor. Okay, so um, yeah, so if you look at the heads of these caterpillars, then of course it's it's not a Markov process, but it's a Markov process with long memory. So and at least to us, it was not obvious that we can solve such a model at all. But it happened that such models are covered by our method of solution. And we can produce some other variants of caterpillars where we have different interactions between caterpillars and different distributions of the jumps. Um, right, so the next, the next question was, quite natural, can we solve such models in full generality? So now we want to do the following. We want to each particle to have different speed and different lengths. Okay, so having interaction particles with different speeds uh, is a quite natural question because like different interesting phenomena can be observed. So one can, one can produce, for example, shocks if, if one looks at blocks of particles with different speeds. Uh, so solving the system with different lengths, it was more our curiosity. There were significant technical issues, and in fact, initially, we didn't believe that we can do it. Um, okay. So the setting is the following. So I will look at the case of Phase step with right Bernoulli jumps in discrete times, where the ice particle jumps, try to jump to the right with probability pi. So then to each particle, we associate a value vi, which we call the speed, which is pi over qi. So qi is one minus pi. And then to each particle, we also associate an integer value li, which is the length. So if we take the initial configuration of particles to be sparse enough, then we obtain the following formula. So the distribution function, the multipoint distribution function of the heads of these caterpillars or particles with long memory, they are again given by the Fredholm determinant. So the formula for the kernel inside the Fredholm determinant okay, looks the same, except that all these functions are now different. So all these functions, q, psi, and phi, they all depend on the speeds and, and lengths in a non-trivial way. So Yeah, so so pi is the distribution of the of, uh, the probability of the jump of ice particle. And then okay, so for example. Right. And then so the speeds of particles in this in this form was they happen to be given by this values pi over qi. Yeah, so for example, before, like in the previous form, which I showed to you, the formula q was a indicator function. Now it looks more complicated. So and instead of like powers of this indicator function, one now we look at a more complicated kernel q. So this kernel q depends on speeds from L to N and depends also on the lengths of the particles in this interval. Well, okay, so VI is defined by PNQ. Ah, okay. So VI, VI is everywhere. How about we say that? Yeah, so um, we have the freedom to add parameters just like theta and alphas by conjugating the kernel inside the fit home determinant. So they're not playing significant role here, but they're playing an important role when we solve the problem. Okay, yeah, so respectively the functions psi are given by more complicated formulas in this case. Okay. 
So it's again a contour integral, but what you see inside a contour integral now depends on the speeds vi and depends on the length li. Okay, but again, the functions phi uh, defined as solutions to bias stabilization problem. So they satisfy this identity, but now the space on which they live is more complicated. Uh, yeah, so the space is defined as follows. If you look at the first n values of the speeds, v1, vn, then we take the distinct speeds, we call them u, u1, u nu, and the value ui has multiplicity beta i in this list. So then the set spanned by the, by the functions phi is given, uh, yeah, so by these functions. It's like exponentials of the speeds multiplied by respective monomials. Um, yeah, so one observation is that if we take two parts in this formula of of psi, the one which depends on time and the, and the one which depends on the length, and we replace them by some more general functions. So still our method of solution works. So we need to make some quite general assumptions of these new functions psi and a, uh, basically spe specifying the analyticity of this function and the orders of poles. But so they're quite general. Oh, uh, right. So looking at this formula, it is not completely clear what these functions psi are, but for some particular values, like, so if, if I take all the values the i to be one, and I take all these functions ai to be one, then we recover some known orthogonal polynomials. So like in the case of TSEP, these functions psi are given by shifted weighted Charlie polynomials, but we can also recover Kraft-Chuk and Maxner polynomials, which respectively correspond to discrete time they set with uh, Bernoulli and geometric jumps. Okay, so this, our functions are some more general, some generalizations of these known uh, orthogonal polynomials. If you think of kind of a more general side, does it necessarily give birth to an interactive particle system, or is it yeah, this is characterization? Well, this is a good question. Yeah, we don't know. So going from particle system to the formula is easier than going from the formula to the particle system. So if, if we have a threat home determinant, it's hard to check if it satisfies, well, solve the Kolmogorov equation, or whatever, you check, whatever you check. Yeah, so we know how to solve the bar standardization problem. Okay, just I don't want to go into too many details, but Okay, so the formula looks like this. Um, okay, so the the function phi is written in terms of convolution of three kernels, q plus, q bar plus, and r. And okay, so of course, like producing a formula like this, um, well, it's, it's, it's not obvious how to do it, but then when you have a formula, like this, it is much easier to check that indeed it satisfies the conditions of the bar standardization problem. So, but, so we have a method which which gives us formulas like this for solutions of the problem. Yeah. So, uh, so what do we see here? So this this kernel Q plus is a generator for random walk. So we look at the time inhomogeneous random walk in discrete time, where on the time time step L the distribution given by this kernel. Okay, so this function q bar is, well, you should think that this is a somehow analytic extension of the convolutions of this functions q plus, and then Rn is some auxiliary function. Uh, yeah, so the, the second, part of the of the function phi involves some expectation with respect to this time in homogeneous random walk, which we call B plus, and it involves the hidden time with tau plus, which is the hidden time of the curve given by the initial configuration of particles at time zero 
but it's signed into homogeneous random walk. Okay, so um, right, so maybe maybe this formula for the solution of the bar standardization problem does not look particularly nice, but when we compute the kernel which, which appears inside the fractal determinant, then the formula looks in fact quite beautiful. Yeah, so what I should say that the dependence of these solutions on the on, on the initial configuration x naught comes from like the sums and the distribution uh, of these hidden hidden probabilities on the hidden probabilities. Right. So uh, yeah. So I will recall you what we want to compute. So we want to compute this kernel given in terms of psi and phi, and so after doing some algebra, we can write it in this form. Okay, so the first term looks the same as before, but the second one is given by the composition of two functions, S and S bar A. So what are these functions? The function S is given to us here. It is some nice contour integral. So the function S bar, again, given to us, and S bar A T, is just an expectation of the function S bar, where the expectation is with respect to this time inhomogeneous random loop, B plus, hitting the initial condition of the particle system. S bar again. Yeah, so we have we have two functions, S and S bar, they're given by contour integrals. Do they have some interpretation? So I get to the Plain vanilla case interpretation. Uh, well, okay, there are no interpretations, but so what you should think that these two functions they converge to the area to so in the in the limit they will converge to area functions. This is some approximations of the area functions. Um Right, so Kevin solves all these discrete models. It is a natural question to study some scaling limits. Uh, yeah, so first of all, from, from these different variants of TSEP, we can compute uh, formulas for models like PNG, polynuclear growth, which is related to the Poissonian last passage calculation. So we can obtain formulas kind of of this type for the for the PNG height function. So we can obtain formulas, for example, for reflected uh, Brownian motions. When we, had, when we have a collection of Brownian motions, they reflect from one another. And again, formulas are given by like, the distributions are given by formulas of this type, where we need to take respective scalings of all these functions. And hopefully we can also uh, compute more general distributions of more general uh, systems like uh, reflecting uh, diffusion processes and so on. Yes. The models are Okay, so it depends. Um, okay, it depends on what 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 type of continuity you're, you're looking at. Which well, so X will be continuous. And then, so if you, if you take the PNG or in nuclear growth, then I go sick. both will be continuous. Yeah, so another natural question is whether we can take the KPC scaling limit of systems like this. Okay, so if we can obtain some new non-trivial limit in the KPG scaling, and in fact, uh, we did obtain one. So what we did is the following. So we looked at the discrete time phase set with right Bernoulli jumps. So now, we just for simplicity, we took the lengths of the particles to be one, so there is no memory, and but we took different speeds of the particles. Uh, so it happened that the scaling limit looks 
uh, much more complicated in the than in the case of equal states. So as before, we need to look uh, at the very large time proportional to epsilon to the minus three half, and we look at the particles near this very large value of epsilon to the minus three half. So we need to look at the particles which are far to the left. Uh, but so in, in order to obtain a non-trivial limit, we had to take the speeds of the particles to be time dependent. So what we did is the following. Okay, so let's say this is the origin. So um, in the usual phase set uh, with equal speeds, all the speeds would be equal to p over q. So we looked at this very large number of particle and epsilon, and we changed the speed in the neighborhood of this value. So instead of the constant speed, we took some continuous. Uh, well, in fact, we took uh, a C1 perturbation of the speeds. OK? Um, Right. Yeah. So, so we took this perturbation of the speeds in some in some window whose size goes to infinity, and so we need to make sure that this size doesn't go to infinity too fast or too slow. Uh, so the result that we obtained is the following. So if you fix any initial density of particles at time zero, so there are constants alpha, beta, gamma. The, sigma theta, which we know how to compute exactly, such that uh, the KPC scanning limit holds. So if the initial condition, if the initial configuration of particles converge under the rescaling to some suitable upper semi-continuous function, then at later times, the distribution of functions uh, of the of the TSEP converges after proper rescaling to the Right home determinant. It's the right hand side. Yeah, I'm going to tell you what it is. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so the the rescaling in this time looks a bit complicated. So we need to subtract. Well, instead of, instead of constants multiplied by powers of epsilon, we need to subtract something complicated. It's like the sum of values defined in terms of speeds on on the interval. It's okay. It looks a bit complicated. So the formula which we obtained in the in, in the limit, so again it's a, it's a fred Hohn determinant. And the structure of the fred Hohn determinant is the same as the structure of the for, or, or, um, so the structure of the kernel is the same as the structure of the kernel for the KPD fixed point, except that now all these functions labeled by tildes, they are defined in terms of this function V defining the perturbation of the speeds. Okay, so uh, in particular, so Q tilde is a transition kernel of some diffusion with a diffusivity parameter sigma squared. So if all the speeds were equal, then okay, this would be just a constant and Q tilde would be just the heat kernel. Okay. And respectively, all these functions, S tilde and S tilde hypo, they are defined in terms of this diffusion with the diffusivity, uh, diffusivity parameter sigma squared. Okay, so for S tilde, we have, we have the explicit formula as a contour integral. And uh, S tilde hypo is again given by the expectation. Uh, of one of these functions as tilde with respect to the Brownian motion hitting the function H naught, which is the limit of the initial configuration of particles. Okay, again, if, if all the speeds were equal, then okay, here we would have constant times z squared. This is like the natural formulas for the kind of modified area functions which appear in the scaling limits of, of such interacting particle systems. But yeah, so but what we observed is different. Um, yeah, so there's a natural question. 
Um, yeah, so so one, one, one can actually assume that there should be some inhomogeneous version of the KPD fixed point. So if you look at the fluctuations of the height functions of one of these particle systems, where the random perturbation of the height function depends on the spatial location, then it's natural to expect that after proper rescaling, it converges to some spatial, spatial, spatial inhomogeneous version of the KPD fixed point. Um, so to look at such spatially inhomogeneous height functions, it seems that we need to consider a set in which the speed of the particle depends on the location, which is of course different what we looked at. But on the other hand, so yeah, so we looked at the taste set where speeds are fixed, but we did some non-trivial perturbation of the speeds. So the speed if you looked are time dependent. Okay. So the natural question is whether what we obtained is the same as what we would, what we would obtain from particle systems with uh, space dependent speeds. And it is not clear at all. Yeah, so I think I will stop at this point. Yeah, sorry, the, co the coefficient you see on the X term, is that because of the speed effect or the long memory effect? The coefficients. Uh... So where exactly? Yeah, so in the that the, 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 the term. So the previous so the yeah, this, this term is because of the speed effect on oh, right, the, right. So uh yes. So this 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 coefficient depends on the speeds v. So this v are these perturbations of the speeds which we consider. Right. So yes, no, the, the round memory doesn't care about that. Uh which is denominator. And the round memory. Oh, because so in this scaling limit, we didn't look at long memory. Oh. So we, we look only at different speeds. So all the memories were one, so there's no memory. Yes. Thanks for the talk. So did you try to compute this limiting kernel for special classical initial data? For, for what? For classical initial data like narrow edge, because it looks to me this S tilde is, is still some area function, right? Up to some complicated, complicated uh, transmission instead of the usual parabolic, parabolic, parabolic shift. Right, right. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. So if you didn't have this, it would be the carry function. Uh, yeah. So if you if you have a function depending on x, it's still it's sort of some every function with the argument shifted by some complicated function in x, right? Yeah, probably it's possible to write, but yeah, we're pretty happy. Yeah, so we're pretty happy with this. Yeah. One. So so that that means. The limiting limiting kernel in the in the step uh, in the narrow batch case is so it's still some some trace rhythm, but with the uh, with a complicated function you putting into that parameter probably. Okay, but okay, so but this this sigma depends on x. Uh, yes, I mean if you you get okay, maybe, maybe there is some non-trivial. Transformation for tracing them. Okay, yeah, so I don't know. Can you engineer it so that the final thing also has an homogeneous time? Yes. Uh, yeah, in fact, this is right. So yeah, we we can we can do it because for example, if we take discrete time by separate Bernoulli jumps. Then we can change the speed on each time, and then so the effect will be just uh, okay. Let me go back. So this function psi would be different. It will depend on these time steps. Yeah, or any choice. Uh, right, it doesn't work for any choice. It happened to. Can you get like a homogenization result if you take the speeds either I and B or periodic or something? So presumably then you can go to the regular KPD fixed point with the simple homogenized parameter. 
you know how to homogenize parameters? Yeah. No, we don't know. So, yeah, so, so you want to take random speeds, right? Right. Or, for example, periodic, which would be easier. Yes, for periodic, we know. Yeah, so we, we can compute something like this for periodic. And in fact, we did it. And so for random, we don't know because then the formula doesn't work. Good questions? Can you see her again? <laughs> 